Hello, everyone. Um, we're going to do something new today. Not new today, but we are going to do uh, cartooning. Um, I did something, though, a little dumb today. I left my laptop open, and uh, I'm currently at 1%. So I have my, my cord plugged in. Um, I'm hoping we don't accidentally uh, get shut down or anything like that. Um, if it does, I'll reschedule and redo this one um, maybe tomorrow or later today or something. We'll see how it goes. So I got that happening. Um, so today what we're going to do is a little more cartooning scene, but let's start with the intro, right? So hello again. Um, hi, Mike25. Um, just to reiterate, if you missed the opening, I I did something dumb and left my laptop open, and uh, I'm down to literally 1% right now. My laptop's plugged in, so if anything happens, we have any issues, I will redo this broadcast uh, either later today or uh, tomorrow as a special one. All right, so let's move on to the, um, to the screen. So what I want to wh – whoops, wrong uh, – wrong screen. What I want to do today is I want to talk to you guys about cartooning scenes, having something with a background in there. So we've been doing some some classic cartoon style art. You know, we've been drawing could be, you know, some kind of animal. Let's say we, we did that last time, right? So here's, I don't know, maybe we'll make it like a a wolf or something, right? Little of those old school cartoon wolves, right? We got we got something like that. And then there's their body, and we use the bean shape, right? And their legs come down, and their tails come up, and their arms are over here, right? So we did something like this. And I'm not going to use the wolf. I'm going to delete this, actually. But we're going to draw like this, and we're going to put them in a background. So we've got a think about how um, we got to think about what the character we're going to use, where are they, what are they doing. Um, so I was thinking, I did, I did uh, an earlier one today for the little kids that I, that I work with um, of a dog running in a backyard. But I'd like to do something a little more in depth with with you guys. So I'm just kind of looking around, trying to get inspiration from around my room, and I thought what might be fun is drawing a mouse looking maybe out of a mouse hole at a cat that's in a room. That could be fun. We could do a frog jumping from its lily pad. Um, we could do a lot of different things. So what I think I'm going to do is I like to draw monkeys. So we're going to draw a monkey today. And the monkey, maybe we'll, we'll figure out what the monkey is going to do. Let's first draw the monkey. So we need to think about where is the monkey? Well, monkeys are usually in trees or by trees, right? So I'm going to have two monkeys in this picture. And I've already decided what I'm going to do with them. So one is going to be leaning up against the tree. So what I like to do is, and, and remember, draw lightly because we can erase. You know, we can always go in. And I'm going to draw just out two lines like this here, right? And this is my tree. The two lines that came down is a tree. And you can think about where the roots of the tree are going to go, which are just these cylindrical or cone shapes, you know. 
So what I'm going to do is I want to put, and again, erase, draw over things. I'm going to put a monkey leaning up against the tree. So to do that, I need a circle for the head and another one here for the bottom part of his mouth. And usually monkeys are drawn with two circles. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a little neck and the body. All right. And that body is a bean shape. And just so you can see, I'm going to erase what I don't need, but you can save that for later. Now, notice how I didn't erase this root that I drew, um, this one right here, okay? The reason I didn't erase that is because I want it to look like the monkey is sitting between the two roots. So I'm going to put one leg coming out. And his foot right here for now. And the other leg is going to come out. And his foot's going to be, and its foot's going to be right there. Right? So we could have the monkey's tail. We'll decide that after. Maybe he's kind of uh, sleeping. So we're just going to draw some arms. And his hands are going to be crossed over like that. So he's kind of sleeping. His eyes be down. Maybe he's got it open, a little open there, right? Put an ear over here. And we'll draw a couple of the letter Zs to, so we know that he's sleeping, right? And I'll put the tail. The tail won't be going up. It's going to kind of come over the, over the root and just kind of sit like that. That's kind of a big tail. Let's thin that out a bit. And remember, I'm just putting down my rough drawings. Um, this is what we call the underdrawing. This is just kind of the skeleton model. I'll go over this and make it look a little better. Now, one of the things that I want to do here, and I haven't decided, is he in the forest? Is he in a zoo? Right? And what I've done here is I've drawn a branch out. And I'll draw leaves on the tree in a bit. But I want a monkey hanging upside down. So drawing monkeys upside down can be difficult if you, if you haven't done it. So a trick is to rotate your paper 100% there, right? And you could draw the monkey to you would be right side up. But I don't need to do that because I know what I'm doing. Number one. Number two, I, uh, I, I'll rotate it if I need it. So I'm going to put a monkey, start with the monkey's head over here and over here. And then I'm going to twist the body like so. All right. And the tail is going to come off and loop around. So he's hanging by the tree. By his tail. And I'll erase what I don't need so you guys can see it better. Right? And we're going to have his little nose right there and his big eyes looking down at him. And I'm going to give him a big face. So let me zoom in on his face here. I mean, and when I say big, I mean a big smile. So I'm going to come in with that line. And then I'm going to go, and it's okay if you go through that circle. Right? Create a bottom chin. Let me just do a little bit of erasing so you guys can see it better. Right? So I'm coming down here, and he's going to have a smile, right? And then I'm going to bring this over so he's going to have these lines, and his cheeks are going to be coming out because he thinks he's going to be funny. All right? And I'm going to zoom out a bit. I'll give him his ears. And maybe some straggles of hair on top, right? So his feet could be kind of hanging. Um, actually, hold on one second. I want the curve to go this way, right? On that side, and I don't like that positioning. Remember, the eraser is your friend. So when I'm drawing digitally, so is the undo button. 
I'm going to put a foot here. I'm going to have the other foot kind of curved out, the other leg out over here, kind of. And I'm going to draw this one arm out here and another one out over here. So it looks like he's getting ready to maybe smack him or do something. I think what might be funny is if we put symbols in his hand. Okay. I'm sorry I'm bad with pronouncing names, but Alicio and Emilio, thank you for joining me. And you're very welcome um, for, for this. I'm, I'm really enjoying doing this stuff here. So you see, so he's going to smash some big symbols and, and make this guy wake up who's just taken a little nap. So I kind of got some roughs here. I'm going to go up a bit more. Maybe I'll add another branch up in that direction. And for the leaves, the way I do leaves is I like to make little clouds. All right. And have them go up. And these little extra pieces I put in create that look of texture in, in there. All right. So we're not going to really worry too much about the tree at the moment outside of this. Um, we need to think where they are. So they're obviously in some, some place where there's a tree. Monkeys usually live in jungles, but they don't usually have trees that look like this in jungles, to my knowledge. This is more of a generic tree. Um, if you want to create that jungle look, look at pictures of the type of trees to try to draw them. So, you know, if you were to draw like a palm tree, right, the palm tree's leaves kind of have this look to them, right? Um, and the palm tree kind of always has a curve and it's kind of got this little jaggedness in its bark and it kind of it twists actually. So that's something to think about. Look at the type of trees. Reference is key. I'm just doing something generic today. I'm not looking at too much reference. Um, this is something just out of my head that I've done before. So I'm just going to create a little background here with maybe a bush, which just looks like the leaves I just made. Do a couple of places, maybe a little hide one behind the tree a bit. So it looks like there's some depth in your picture. All right. Um, we can add some just lines and things like this to create high grass. Maybe some around the tree bark. I like to even use these little like ovals and put a few together and create rocks. And a few dots could be pebbles. We could put, and I'm just coming up with ideas. You don't have to do everything I'm doing here, right? Maybe some grass coming off the rocks. We could even do like a little flower that it's close to the ground. And that's like making a little cloud with a circle and then maybe some leaves off the, on it. Um, one of the things that could also be done for a flower is bring it up with a, uh, with a stem and a leaf and figure out the type of flower you want. So like if you wanted more of like a rose, you know, you do something like that. But I don't think a rose is in place here and a rose grows on a bush. So you can do you know, tulip shape, you can do that one that I just made there. You see? So just come up with, with whatever you want to do, you know. And I'm going to put a big cloud in the background for now. You know, if they were at a zoo, we could do something, erase the cloud, and do a line like this. And let's erase the cloud so you can see. And maybe we do a couple of lines down here, just kind of space them out, try to space them out evenly. A little bar over here. And we could start putting people looking at the monkeys. So here, I'll put a camera in front of the, in front of the face. They're so taking pictures of the monkey. So then you could draw more people out there. 
So just get creative. Think about what you want to do. Where do they, where do you want to put them in? All right. When you got the layout done, we can start drawing kind of over it, um, start putting detail into it. I'm going to do this on a separate layer. I'm going to show you kind of how professional artists work. Now, some artists go into more details and I'll actually draw out the fingers and, you know, the thumb holding it and they'll, they can get in really close and do all that, you know, more of the, more of the detail and trace over. Um, I don't usually do that unless it's, it's a picture that really needs the detail and I'll show you why because when I draw, I just like to have some, some suggestions and some reference. Um, if someone else was going to, what we call ink, you know, put color, you know, put ink and color over, over my drawings, I would draw this in more detail so they knew exactly what every line is. For me, this is just notes. So what I do is I lower my opacity, meaning I make the picture a little lighter, and then I go over it in a different brush. Um, unless I want to keep that pencil look. And I'm going to go over it in this hard brush. Um, and let me just see the line. I think I might make it a little thicker. So this can be done in pencil. And if you want to work the way I'm working right now, and obviously you don't have a computer, what you do is you take a, sec a second sheet of paper and you go, it's a nice day out, put it up on your window and trace over it. Um, I used to do that all the time. And I've actually done that on professional projects when uh, my light box, uh, you know, like powers out, I don't have uh, electricity and I needed to trace stuff before it got dark. That's how I would do it. So, and when you're working this way, you could draw, you know, however you want. Usually if you're right-handed, you're going to stop, start at the top right corner, um, and work your way across and down. If you're left-handed, it'll be the opposite, but I'm going to show you guys another thing. Um, let me switch the camera back in a second. I just want to grab a sheet of paper. Okay. Oh, don't want to. Okay. So I have a regular eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. You can get something smaller. It's not a big deal, but if you fold that a few times and you know, something this size, maybe smaller, depending on how big your hand is. Now I'm working digitally. I'm using something called a smudge glove or a smudge guard. It prevents the oils from my hand getting onto my, my monitor, my drawing monitor here. And what I want to, and, and the reason I do this, so the oils don't go on. Now, some of you, if you see me in school, I've done this a few times drawing and it's the same thing. So I put this down under a spot where I'm drawing and I put my hand on, on top while I'm drawing. And so while I draw, um, the oils from my hand are not smudging and it's, and it's not smudging the work. So I can move this constantly around my, my paper. Um, so that is, uh, that's something to think about. But when I'm digitally inking, I can start anywhere on the page. Oh, whoops, did I just, sorry, I think, give me one second. I accidentally took it from the street. There you go. So now we're back here. And I'm going to go back to working with the monkeys because I think most people are going to want to work with the monkeys. So, and if, the, and you're just working in pencil, that's perfectly fine. What you want to do is come in. I don't like that line. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in and don't be afraid to rotate your paper. Even when you're drawing in pencil, um, because drawing in pencil or, or anything, you want to get those proper curves. So you want to draw what works best for you. And I'm going to do something like that, I think. Actually, you know what? I'll do it when I rotate back. So I'm constantly rotating my paper to get the line quality that I want. And if I don't like a line, I just erase it and do it again. Yeah. Let's 
move that in a little more. It's a little too tight. You know, for those who, who, who worked with me at the school I work at and have drawn with me, you know everything I'm doing on here on this computer is something I've, I've done with you in, in class. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put his tongue in here. And I'll fill in this area. And I don't usually draw any lines for teeth. I don't think they need to be done in this style particularly. Oops, don't like that line. Nope. Not good there. Okay, and I'm gonna bring this down. Still not good. Um, if you do draw digitally, one of the tricks is to um, I don't like that. Is to uh, zoom in on pictures. You know, what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna bring this down. And same here. Okay, now I'm going to zoom out for a second, and what I want to show you guys is I'm going to turn off that drawing layer below it, and you can see how clean this looks. That's what using a second sheet of paper will do for you, all right? So I'm going to zoom out a bit. Let me rotate. Okay. Um, what was it, Emilio and, uh, and uh, Alicio? Can you tell me, I know you go to the same, uh, you, you guys go to Padea where I teach, or um, can you tell me what classes you're in? I, I see so many people, and I honestly can't remember everybody um, just by name. I'm better with faces. So what I'm doing here, you remember I said I just used something as notes? I decided to add a little, like, fur cuff so he can have more of that human quality hand there. And now I'm just one, two, three, because he's holding the symbol. And I might make the symbol a little bigger. Actually, what I want to do, symbols, if you ever look at one, actually kind of come up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a curved line like this. Make it look like you can see the inside of the symbol. And there's usually a little dot or something there. I don't like that. Maybe I'll just do a little cross for now. I can always come back in and fix that. And whoop, hold on. Hmm. And you can see how I have it how I have the drawing at an angle because I do draw a lot at angles. It's one, two, three, and the thumb. Oh, don't like that. You know, I'm gonna make them a little fatter. Let me uh, move this over so you guys can see it better. Sometimes the, there's a little glitch. It's one. That is two. That is three. And then the thumb part of the toe would be right there. And I'm going to do the same thing with the, uh, with the foot here. The, or the, the, the end of the leg that I did. And I'm going to actually bring it out a bit and bring it in. And I'm going to have the
And I'm using this, you notice over here, this area, I didn't trace over that because I'm just using this as a guide. So this side, I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and let's get the bottom of the foot done. I mean, the, the leg. And I'm going to want to erase just a tad bit right there. I'll go in and fix it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's do this arm. So I'm going to bring this arm around. And sometimes it's easier if you pull to yourself... And I'm going to do this symbol. And bring this in. And the hands will be one, two, three. And we'll be over here. And it needs, actually, the hand I made is a little too thin. So let me do some erasing there. So I'm going to leave that as his thumb. And what I want to do, one, two, and three. Okay. And now I have, let me just reset this view so you can see it. Now I have a pretty decent looking monkey right there. Now let's draw the sleeping monkey. I don't like these lines. I got to be closer. Whoops, I hit the wrong button there. Okay. If anyone has any questions, feel free to ask. I'm happy to answer anything. Um, my monkeys, the way I'm currently drawing them, are very Hanna-Barbera-ish. I don't know if you guys know the studio. Hanna-Barbera is the company that created the Flintstones, Yogi Bear. And they've had a few monkeys in their uh, cartoons. And if you have the Boomerang uh, app or channel, you might be able to see some Hanna-Barbera cartoons and see how they draw monkeys. I draw monkeys different ways quite a bit. It just depends on my mood. Today was a Hanna-Barbera mood. Nope, not liking that. This is why we need to rotate sometimes. Nice. Okay. I'll give him a little neck. And I'm going to make his arm come down. So let me zoom out and fix that. There we go. When I'm cleaning up my artwork today, or anytime, when I start a line, I try to, I try to uh, finish it. All right. So. And I'm going to add a little. Now, one of the things I'm going to do with this Is his his hands are on his on his um, resting on his stomach, so I can either have the fingers intertwined or overlapping. I'm gonna have them um, overlapping, so it's one, two, three, and then the bump down. But I'm gonna see some fingers from the other side because the arm is right here. Give a little fur there and. All right, so I don't know if you guys can can see that. Uh, let's draw this tree stump. And now this is when I like to get into it and have some fun with the with the illustration there and making the trees. And this is why I just kind of use it. 
use these as references because I like to create the texture. Oops, don't want to go in that direction. Sorry. I want to create the texture in these trees. See, I just made a knot right there by making some some simple stuff here, some you know squiggly lines there, a few dots to represent uh, pebbles. Um, here we're going to do his feet now. So one, two, three. Now I'm going to draw a line because you're seeing the underside and like a thumb inside. So drawing monkey feet are like drawing hands. Okay. And maybe there's that other side of the root right here. I'll do some grass. Okay. And let me rotate again here. Set view. Okay. So I'm going to come to this route. Now watch what I do here. I'm going to create a few curved lines to create these bumps. And I'm going to bump it up a little bit more. So it looks like there's some texture being made in the tree, that the tree has some roughness to it. Um, I'm going to maybe come in and create some more swirls and... You know, that's the beauty of trees. They can look however you want to make them. All right. And one of the reasons, like when I draw a tree, is because the the trees are never look exactly alike. They're not 100% smooth. So I don't want to really make clean lines here. I, I want a, a little kind of bumpy and rough. And the only thing you really need to know about trees is the the, the closer to the ground they, they become, the thicker and fatter they are. Okay. And... All right. Um, much like I did for the root down here with the, with the couple of bumps, I'm going to kind of do the same thing with the tree here with the, this branch. Okay. And the reason I'm doing that is because the branch comes out of the tree very much like a root does in the sense of the way they're connected. Now, actual people into nature and science may tell you different and that's okay. Hey, Noah, welcome. See, I remembered. Um, and schoolwork is important. That should always come first. Um, so, you know, I might have done too much detail in that branch, but I'm going to leave it alone right now. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm creating those bumps. And remember, drawing trees aren't, you know, they're not perfect, so... You know, put little knots in them. Put some lines in different directions. Maybe, you know, something like that. You know, and make sure... Hold on. I want to get to the eraser. Where they connect makes sense. You see how I connected that, but it didn't make sense? I need to bring this kind of down a bit. So my tree should actually be a little, a little thicker. So I'm not going to worry about that right now, but really should come down like that. I guess I did worry about it now. So let me erase this. And I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to make bark. I've been doing some of those lines already, which is fine. You know, that's one way of doing it. Um, this isn't going to be like a perfect picture that I'm going to go turn around and try to sell somewhere. This is just a, a teaching lesson. So um, one of the things you could do for a tree bark is kind of just draw a line down um, have them touch in some places, maybe not. And this is a very popular one. The way I, I've been doing it is how I illustrate usually for comics, but the way I just drew it here, this is much more um, for, for animation. At least that's how I've, I've seen it. Um, now I'm going to draw the the trees, and they get thicker and fuller when they're down to the edge here, just to kind of cover up 
And notice what I did down here, right here. You see that? I connected that a little bit further back so it helps create that illusion of depth that the, that part of the tree is behind or part of the leaves are behind that that branch or the other leaves. So let's just make some little pieces of texture here. Um, let's go over here. And so let's zoom out for a second. Okay. We got the monkey sleeping. We got the other monkey with the symbols. I'm just going to draw the Z's coming out of him right now. And I'm going to remove that background. So do you see how... I don't like that little cross now that I'm looking at it. Do you see how I've created this? This looks like a clean piece of paper. What, I, what you would do is if you have a sheet of paper, draw out your outline, which was this illustration. Draw that outline out first. If you want to make it detailed, make it detailed. Show the fingers of the monkey. Show the toes of the monkey. Add bricks to the, to the wall if you wanted to. But then take another sheet of paper. And if you don't have what we call a light box, you tape it to, the, to your window on a nice day like today and put another sheet of paper over it and just start tracing over and add in the shapes where you want it. So, for example, if I wanted to create the bush, and I'm not following my bush right now because it doesn't matter to me. I just want it to look like a bush. There was another one coming out over here. Right? Some grass coming out. Actually, I want this line to be back here. Another bush right here. Actually, really enjoyed that shape I made up there. And what I'm doing this one's just going all the way to the edge here. Whoops, to uh, that shouldn't be there. I raised the real point. Um, I got some rocks here that I made. Just some ovals, some big trees. Yeah. Um, we got these different types of flowers that I made. And we got... All right, so I just did that quickly, but if I turn that off, you can see I'm getting this full, this full image going on. Now, if I want to leave it like this, that's perfectly fine. I can draw some more trees. I'm going to show you how I would do that. So if I want to draw trees that make it look like it's far in the distance, I'm going to just create a bunch of what would look like clouds, you know, just a bunch of bumps going in different directions. And then I would come in and finish it up. So it can look like however you'd like it to look like. And now these are all the tops of trees. So I can add in the texture. I'm just going to start drawing some rectangles or a couple of lines. And I might even branch out and draw branches. And maybe even add in a little texture to them. And I'm not going to do them all right now with texture, but maybe I got branches coming down over here. And, you know, you really want to just kind of change it up. Maybe even leave a, a, a space between them so this... I'm just going to color in right now so you can see, is a space, right? I'm drawing texture in the trees here. I'm coming down. 
But what's important is that is that I don't take away from this image. This piece right here, this is what's important to me. Not all the other stuff. So I don't want to go crazy on the details in the trees. I don't want to make it very messy and heavy. I just want however people are going to focus. Now I'm looking at this image and I feel the way I drew trees is taking away from the center. It's not even the center. It's a little off center, but the two monkeys. So I don't think that's a good background idea. What I think is going to be a better background idea is drawing that zoo. So I'm going to draw a line. Let me get to the layer here. And I'm going to make it a straight line for now. This is something you guys would need a ruler for. Hold on. Undo that. Um, I'm going to draw that straight line. Whoops. That straight line. Why isn't it working? There it goes. That straight line. And you know what? I think I know what the problem is. Hold on. Oh, nope, that's not it. Okay. I thought I had an issue with my rotation. It just it's because I drew the, the picture underneath a little different. Oops. And then I'm gonna draw the bar. Do and to make the bar, I'm gonna use a thicker brush. I only have to draw it once. You know what, I'm going to lower it because I don't want, it's something in art we call tangents when lines meet up. All right, and then I'm going to just draw those bars. I wanted to raise, raise them up. Now that heavy line, I may may take a little bit away from the drawing, but not as much as those trees. And actually, I think it helps frame it a little better. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back down to a smaller brush here, and I can now draw that guy and add the detail to him. So he's going to be holding a camera, right? And maybe it could be a phone. Who knows? These days, no one actually, I think, carries real cameras with them unless they're photographers. And notice how I created the hands just now. All right. I'm thinking here's the box of the camera, right, or the phone that they're holding. I'm thinking how would you actually hold it? Well, your fingers would stretch around, right? And you'd have, use your index finger to hold the top, and you'd use your thumb to hold the bottom. So that would be one arm and you, uh, one hand. And you might see a little bit of the other, which is why I drew that. Another thing what some people do, um, is they'll grip it, and their fingers will come around like so. So holding, and you won't see the thumb because the thumb's on the other side. So you decide how you want your character to hold the camera. So I'm going to put the phone right here. Oops, I don't like that line. Mm -hmm. And let's make this like an actual camera. All right. And there's a person's head right there. Maybe they're smiling. You know, you can't really see the eyes because they're covered by the camera, but you can see the ear. And let's give this guy some spiky hair. All right. You may not see his arms completely bent. All right, and he'll be in a like a, a t-shirt there. Let me zoom out for a second. 
and let's turn off that background. Well, sorry. So do you guys see how I created a picture, how I composed this image to come up with something to make the picture interesting? Here's a guy getting ready to take a photo. But one of the things I did was I used, you know, a lighter, a lighter pen point there, uh, but you can do that with less pressure. So he's not someone who is the focus. I still have my focus on the monkeys. All right. Um, there's something, whoops, cancel. There's something we have in drawing. And it's called the rule of threes, or you might hear it, um, point of interest. Basically what happens, and I'm doing this, is we, whoops, is we divide, that's not pretty equal. We try to divide in three equals. So this may not be 100% equal here. Don't worry. Um, I'm going to use that line. And I'm going to put one right about here. I'm sorry. So the most interesting part of the photos are always going to be where characters intersect. You really don't want to put them in the center. Now, we're looking at what I did. Are they technically in the center? Sort of. But this right here is the center of the picture. So my characters are kind of off-centered. And, you know, I'm going to use a different color so we can see this better. Right? So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw again over it so you guys can see it a little better. Whoops, I do. Why isn't it doing what I want? There we go. And now, there we go. So these, let's change this color. Let's go into this. So right here, right here, and right here are the most interesting parts of an image. Uh, would it be better if my monkeys and everything were moved over slightly? Probably. But let me show you what I did here. Most people will go straight to the center to look at an image first. That's just how the eyes go. All right. Now, I've done a few things. The idea when we draw and create a scene is to push our reader's eye around the page. Um, in animation, you really want more in the center because that's where people are looking. But in, in illustration, it, a little off-center is fine, too. So I've made it that this monkey's eyes are looking down, right? So it's going to push your eyes because we look at characters' eyes. It's going to push your eye down. Look at that monkey. Now, his eyes are looking down, right, which would push to his feet, okay, which is fine, which will push you off the page. Not bad, not 100% not what we want, but you're going to probably look at this monkey, and you'll notice that the tail is going up, so it's going to kind of push us back up. The other thing I did was I have this guy right here, and he's looking, because even, even though he's holding the camera, he's looking down at the monkeys. So no matter if you go to, if you come over to this spot right here, your eyes are going to automatically be pushed down into the monkey image. All right? There's a lot more to this, and I can't go into it into it right now because I could do an entire hour on the point of interest. I just want you to understand why I do certain things and why I place them in stuff. Another thing that is that we could do is crop. So if you have a photograph and it's really, really large, but you want to focus in on one part, we crop it, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a box like that big. Uh, let's go to select inverse and we're going to drop it in with black. Okay. So now think of this and it's okay if some white appears. Think of this as where we're going to be viewing it. That is a lot more interesting than the entire picture. But what if I zoomed in here? 
Is that interesting? You know, these are things you want to think about. You know, I, when you see, you might have seen, um, let me switch over to my camera so you can see me. You might have seen uh, artists doing something like this or, you know, photographers or something. What we're doing is we're trying to capture and crop out the scene that we are looking for. So I'm going around my room right now looking at different things. Sometimes you may even bring it in and say, no, that, that's, a better, that's a better piece right there. Okay? And that's the part I'm going to draw. What I've done, sorry, what I've done by creating this black box, and this is something you can make out of a piece of construction paper, black construction paper or something. You just cut a rectangle, whatever size you want, and drag it around the picture and see what is the most interesting. Maybe you have a picture from a magazine or, or something from, you know, a family photo or something, and you want to draw it. Draw this box, create it, and put it through and see where the most interesting part is. How would you direct people? You know, something like this, even though his feet are cut off, his feet aren't 100% important in this image because we already know that he's sleeping. We already know that he's leaning, right? We know this monkey's here. And this, let me just move it over. Ah, that's too much. This is definitely better. And this leans on the point of interest where this monkey, the, the monkey with the symbols, his head is on the point of interest now. Or the top of his head really is. So we're looking at this. If we come back over to here, sorry, I'm losing one of my earbuds here. Okay. Um, so this now makes you know you're in a zoo. You may not know you're in the zoo if you when you bring it over here and block him out, but having him here, all right, shows that they're in the zoo. We can cut some of it off here. Now, we already know this guy up in the corner is taking a photo. He's pushing us in, right, to these monkeys. This monkey's over here getting ready to, to hit the symbols. Uh, this one's sleeping. We don't need any more than that. This actually might be the perfect part of the image. And if that's the case, I would go in and crop it afterwards. All right. I like to work large. It's something from my background with uh, in animation. It's why I probably even work this way. I, I like to think of things as, as kind of movie screens. Um, so that um, that's really how you how you draw a scene. How do you compose a scene? Um, my time's almost up cause I only do an hour with you guys. Uh, and I are at 50, like almost 54 minutes that I've been on, but before I end, are there any other questions, any questions on what I've done here? I'll give you guys a moment to, to type. If you have any questions, I'm going to take a sip of my water. Well, I don't see any. Oh, hold on. Noah says, I'm a very messy sketcher that most of the time I can't erase to look good. And I'm practicing. Okay. Let me, let me help you out here. I'm going to switch back to, to my camera. <coughs> Excuse me. So let me, let me, uh, I don't know if you remember if you were part of my first, let me just grab a, a pencil. I don't remember if you were part of my first uh, video I showed, but one of the first things I showed is that we draw with different parts of our arm. And believe me, I'm very messy, so I understand. I love sketch. So we draw with our wrist, and, you know, that's moving just your wrist. You can see my elbow. Let me get into the camera here isn't moving. It's just my wrist is moving. If I draw with just my elbow, my wrist isn't moving, but my elbow's moving. And then if I draw with my arm, with my shoulder, 
you know, I lock my shoulder, not my shoulder, I lock my elbow and my wrist, and you see my shoulder's the thing doing the movement. So when we work with just our wrist and we're holding the pencil kind of tight, that's how we're going to draw really hard. It's going to be hard to erase. Also, kind of choking up on the pencil, you know, not being right at the edge is good. It adds to looseness. All right. So that is something that'll help you. And I'm going to show you guys um, something really quick. Let me, you know what? Let me get a better pencil. So I got a better pencil just so you can see better. And I'm going to draw something really quickly. Uh, not, not a real picture, just some lines. The first one is going to be me being very tight. Okay. So these first two lines I created, the, third, the smaller one was drawn with my wrist. The second, the, the second one here was drawn with my elbow. All right? But that's me holding it down here. I'm going to do the same thing, but now I'm holding the pencil up here. Same amount of pressure. And let me do one with my elbow. Okay. Uh, where is it? Do you see the difference in them? I don't know if you can see it, but it is lighter. And if I was to erase... There. And there. You, you can see the line kind of remains on both, but that's because this is a... Uh, I think a three or four B pencil. Um, so it's a little heavier, but this one here, the, where is it? Erased better because it was lighter. All right. Um, so that's something to think about. Also the first thing, not the first thing, but when we got into drawing today um, and the first thing I did was I drew on the computer on a separate layer. Uh, I'm, on, I'm in a program called Photoshop, right? And in Photoshop, I created my rough. And this is where I can get very messy. This is my underdrawing. That's the professional term. It's kind of just the skeleton, the building block of my drawing. Okay? And I'm not showing you the screen right now, so that makes no sense to you. So hold on one second. All right. So here, this is my underdrawing. This is my skeleton. This could be as messy as I want it to be. Then what I do is I take another sheet of paper and I draw over it. And the way I do it, if I don't have a light box, I use my window. Yeah, on a nice day like today, you can tape your, um, you can tape, you know, a piece of paper up to your window. I wouldn't use scotch tape because scotch tape sometimes is a bit of a pain coming off. Painter's tape is great. You know, that blue painter's tape. If you have artist tape, even masking tape, as long as you don't press down too hard, um, but I recommend painter's tape is your best bet or artist tape. Um, and then after I draw that, I can remove that other sheet. And I also drew the background somewhere. Let me see. Nope. Nope. That was the tree one. Nope. There's the railing and there's the guy. All right. So I sometimes work on different layers just because it's easier um, but all this would be, all layers would be it's separate sheets of paper. You can use tracing paper for that so you can clean stuff up and, and look at and see what you, you want to do. And, and what's great about doing something with tracing paper is after you have that image or you have the good image and then I take out a piece of tracing paper on the tracing paper, I add this person here and say, hey, does that look good? And if it doesn't, I haven't ruined my regular paper or my, my finished product. I can be like, oh, okay, that does look good. Now I'll, I'll transfer that person over to the, uh, to the actual drawing. Um, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the big thing. I mean, drawing, don't be afraid to be a little messy in your art. I am constantly messy as an artist. Um, when I draw, everything about me is sketchiness. So... Like if I was to draw and I'll do something, uh, hold on, I'm on the wrong layer. I mean the wrong tool. So like, let's say I was to draw something and I'll draw quick. 
so, and, and usually most of my work is quick because I want, I, I like speed. And again, with my background in animation, I'm about capturing movement. I'm about capturing the gesture of a character here. So let's say this is some kind of superhero at the moment. Right? And we'll give them a cape. And the cape will be hanging down. There's the gloves. We'll make this Batman because he's kind of a, a fun guy to draw, although he's not my favorite. But All right. So that's my quick Batman right there. You can see that's very messy, very sketchy. This is when I would come down. I'm going to lower my opacity here. Come on to a new layer. And now what I could do is pick the lines that I really like. And I want to make a brush a bit. All right. And I can say, you know what? I like this line. And just draw it down. And this is where we clean up. I don't like that angle, so I'd erase that. This is where we can be a little tighter in our drawing. All right. And you can see what I'm doing now. It's nothing nothing crazy, nothing out of the ordinary here. Um, I'm just choosing the lines that I like the best. And if they're not, and, and my lines are a little wobbly right now because when we draw digitally, we should be zooming in. And I can, you can see I got a better line there. Um, All right. So Noah, does that answer your question? Or not not really a question, but how to how to get better lines with your work and, and be cleaner with your drawings? All right. I'm just going to zoom out right now, and I don't like how high I have Batman's head, um, so I'm going to erase his. And sometimes it's, you know, you have to go in and fix this. Uh, let's bring it down a bit. Nope, still too high for me. Well, I'm happy I can help you, Noah. Um... I'm going to end here for today. I'm not going to have the best picture right now, but this is a good way to work. All right. So anyway, that was my Batman. Um, so my Batman wasn't really the picture today, so this here was. So this is the best thing to do when you draw a scene. Really plan it out. I'm going to recommend getting reference material. That is key. Um, you know, it's okay to use reference. It's okay to copy um, pictures right now. You guys are learning. Don't think everything has to come out of your head. I draw from my head a lot because I've done so much, but don't think I don't look at reference. I'm always looking at reference. If I have to draw a certain style car, because I can draw a car off the top of my head, um, you know, I got, I got the last, I'm sorry, I was reading your comment, Noah, um, which I'll read in a second. But I draw, I, I have a lot that I can draw off the top of my head, but if, and I could draw a generic car just because I know how a car is built. But if you say draw a Ferrari, I don't know what a Ferrari always looks like or the, or the shape of it. So, or a specific style of Ferrari. So I have to look that up, excuse me, so I can draw it. Um, same thing with trees. Hairstyles, I do that a lot, especially women's hairstyles. They could be a little um, a little hard um, because there's so many different ways of drawing and, and women do their hair so differently. Sometimes when I'm out, I just sit and I'll look at things will capture my eyes, usually like hairstyles, because I find them I find them very difficult to to keep up with styles and, and, and how to draw them. So I'll sit and like study, you know, and um, 
hairstyles both on men and women but more on more on women because you know i feel more uh the men's hairstyles are a little easier they're a little more generic um i look at i look at everything horses i have the some of the most trouble drawing horses i understand how they're put together but they're just difficult to draw so every time i have to draw a horse i look at reference um if i'm doing a comic and i need somebody in, a, in an action pose um let's say they're, they're doing a kick i'll look up pictures of martial artists i will look at um baseball players swinging a bat like let's say i have to draw a caveman or something swinging on a club I will draw, I will look at a, a figure of a sports, you know, an image of a sports figure. So these are things that I've done. These are things that I still do to this day. I've been drawing, I don't know how many years, almost my entire life. I've been using reference since I was a kid, since a, uh, since a, um, an art teacher told me to. Um, and, you know, some, I can draw stuff because art is muscle memory. I can draw stuff off the top of my head now because I've done it so much. But reference is always important. Always look at stuff. If you need to trace it to begin with, trace it. If you need to just kind of copy it, copy it. That's the important thing. Um, use stuff to help you draw. Don't don't think there is no tools you can't use. Um, Noah, let's see just quickly. We got our laptop from school today, so we can use that for the final picture. That's, that's awesome. And uh, I'll see you next week, too. So thank you everybody for joining me. I, I had a great time today and um, I'll see you next time. All right. Have a great day.